let me give you an idea that why actually we need serverless architecture let's get started with that can anyone recognize what this photo is anyone what is this here what is i'm trying to show here on the picture check-in service check-in counter exactly airport check-in yes that is a kiosk what you find on airports and it would be a check-in kiosk in which you could go scan your boarding pass sorry scan your passport or maybe enter your pnr number and it would print your boarding pass for you or it would print your luggage tag or it would print or you could change your seating arrangement there or you could order a food or something from that so that is a kiosk and is there a man behind it answer is no it is a kiosk so it is just working and anyone can come in and can start using this service there is no manpower required to be standing there always this is a running machine null card type muhammad i can relate it to dubai like there is a null card which you use for your vehicle and that's the exact same thing sorry null card is that for your riding the metro or buses right muhammad so null card is what you use when you are riding a bus or a train or a metro that time you utilize that null card yeah metro exactly okay now most of the three things this will be running 24 by 7 but i don't expect that people would be lining up here somebody sometime would come and then they would be able to utilize this service so this kiosk would be running 24 by 7 but it doesn't mean that my back end also would be running 24 by 7 let's see in current situation if i'm keeping my front end running 24 by 7 the back end server also has to be running 24 by 7 and this backend server may be serving multiple kiosks. What this backend server is actually doing, the server is actually doing some processing. So when you enter your PNR number for that this kiosk like this one, what happens? It would check what kind of passenger you are, do have fulfilled the requirement, what is your booking ID, show it to you, give you option to print your boarding pass, give you option to change your seat. So that backend is processing only when somebody requests something to be processed here so only then it would run but what is happening here that this will be executing some code and i have to ensure that i am keeping it running for very very long period in the sense that it would be executing the same code for me and i have to ensure that it is mostly idle it is costing me money to keep it running 24 by 7 and it is having operational overhead also with that so that is what commonly would be happening when i have a 24 by 7 running machine in my environment right okay let's think more on that what about a service like a chatbot chatbots are becoming very common right you go to your bank site or you go to a, a company site they would have a checkbox chatbot and the chatbot will say hey how can i help you and based on the input you provide it would do some processing for you but if you look at a chatbot it is basically sitting idle it won't automatically become active unless and until somebody asks a question to that chatbot and if i have a 24 by 7 server running for this chatbot basically i'm wasting my resources in that case so that is another example where i do not need continuous processing all right now when i say this example people think that serverless is only good when i have to build something which is not doing continuous processing i would say not always let me give you an example here from a website from nasa this one is a project which NASA runs, which is their NASA Mars rover. So this is a web application they have built. And this web application allows you to send your name to Mars in a digital format. Let me try to open it into a browser and I'll show it to you from there. Give me a minute, I am opening it up. So this website, which is there, which is called send your name to Mars. This one is built on a completely, completely serverless architecture. Through this website, what you could do, you could register your name and NASA would digitally send it to the 
mars mission when they are sending data so just to make awareness about people so they give you a boarding pass like this so you could go ahead register yourself it's an old approach now but yes you could go ahead and put your name get your boarding pass get your maps frequent flyer information and all the stuff so that is just to make little more awareness about for people into the space program now how this is working at the back end and the back end if you read this article and i'll send you this link this is running something called all the microservice based architecture it is leveraging amazon cloudfront it is leveraging amazon s3 lambda at the edge for processing api gateway as a dispatcher and then at the back end we are using dynamo db so everything here is a microservice architecture and when there was huge request coming in the side scale to 67k request at a given point in time so you could realize that it's not only for very small workload it could be the huge workload you want to handle and it could still work from it should not be a problem at all so that's how our services can help even design any architecture at any scale it depends on how you want to realize and use those particular services okay everyone okay so far now let me talk about some of the services we offer from aws which is micro which are serverless right so serverless is a mechanism of delivering a service it's not one specific service but multiple services may have a serverless component associated with that let's see some of them here now here we have compute compute is a way where i am looking to process something so if i want to process something i need processing power processing power is in terms of cpu i would be needing ram for it i may need network connectivity for it i may want to have some local storage for my data so the service would offer that service which is lambda which will offer you the same component fargate fargate is another service but this one is purely purely focused on containers so we could run containers from it so this is what we can offer for serverless architecture what else now this is one component compute what about if i need a front end for my application a api handler so we could deploy it through amazon api gateway again serverless api proxy is basically being used here that's what we can leverage and when it comes to store data into databases we still offer serverless option so serverless is dynamo db amazon aurora so serverless doesn't mean there is no server when you execute lambda somewhere some server is still there but only difference is that you are not maintaining that server it is someone else responsibility to maintain that server keep it functioning keep it running and when you need it the server would be given to you for a short period of time you get your work done and then server is pulled back so someone else can process data on that so that is the main idea serverless doesn't mean there is no server at all only thing is you don't see those servers and you don't maintain it so you can focus on building application rather than maintaining server and maintaining the workload on that so that is the main idea of serverless and serverless is a term which can be serverless compute serverless api serverless databases and then there is a inter process messaging so inter process messaging when we have services to communicate with each other you could use sns you could use sqs and if you have to orchestrate multiple services together then we have orchestration service like step function and then if you are looking to store something then obviously there is amazon s3 which is again serverless and if you are looking for analytics there are services which work in serverless fashion like kinesis amazon athena so they could all help you in getting your work done so serverless is a common term multiple services may give you a serverless approach and when you maintain or use serverless services you basically save your time and efforts and do not worry about back end so you could only focus on building the best application experience for your customers so that's what is the idea of a serverless